Good day, my schoolers. This is my school channel, and my name is Abiola. For this video lesson, you are going to join me to tackle the jam CBT past question for the subject biology, the year 2022. So do not go anywhere, stay with us, and we will be right back. Welcome back to my school YouTube channel. Right here in this video lesson, you are going to join me to solve questions 1 to 21. So let's kick off with question number 1. So we have um, sources of air pollutants are what? So when you talk about pollutants, we are looking at particles, right, or substances that actually cause a shift in the normal structure, right, of a particular environment. So in this context, we are looking at the air environment, right? So what are the particles or the substances, right? that actually cause a disorder to air or in the air. So air pollutants, let's look at option A. We have industrial chimneys, we have burning fossil oil and river dams. All right, so the presence of river dams actually qualifies this particular option. We know that river dams, of course, has an effect on the environment, right, and general climatic condition. However, it cannot be linked as an air pollutant, so it disqualifies this option. So we have option B, sulfur dioxide, we have acid rain and pesticide. So sulfur dioxide and pesticide, they are very good air pollutants, you no know, good in the context of, okay, they are credible air pollutants. However, acid rain is just one of the aftermaths, right, the effect when the air is polluted. So this disqualifies option B. So let's consider option C together. So we have sulfur dioxide, we have vehicle exhaust, and aerosols. So we are talking about, you know, the exhaust, the gases that come out from combustion, you know, from your vehicles that we drive around, right? We're talking about sulfur dioxide. Then we have aerosols. So basically, you are looking at um, fine particles, you know, of solids, basically, that are being suspended, right? So um, you want to look at natural ones like your fog, like your mist, you know, all of those um, things. So those are typical aerosols. So of course they are air pollutants, you know, and we have the natural and the artificial one, or you can say the man-made one. So this is a very good um, compilation for sources. Then we have seaweed, smoke, and old vehicles. So if you look at this very closely, we can actually identify with um, seaweed, you know, the odor given off as the organic uh, uh, matter begins to decay. Then we have smoke, of course, air pollutant, but old vehicles, you know, something not um, directly linked to the context of what we are looking so the most valuable option here is option C. So option C is the right option. Question two. The body of a snail is divided into head and what else? So uh, for clarification, you know, we just have this question presented. You know, for clarification, we can see it that uh, biologically, the snail has an unsegmented body. All right. So but for the sake of this particular question, I can basically say that um, you can actually divide um, the snail body part, you know, into probably the head, you know, where you have the eyes, the antenna, right? Then we talk about the visceral mass, you know, where you find your shell being carried. Of course, I'm talking about land snail here, okay? Then um, I can talk about the foot, you know, and the foot has some um, several functions, as we know. So if I just want to go with the flow of the question presented in this particular jump, um, exam. So I will just go with something um, closest or something that we can work with. So and the closest here should be the head, um, the visceral mass and the foot. Alright, so option D is what I would go for. Three, an adaptation for defense in animals is what? Okay, so we are talking about an adaptation. It can be structural, it can be chemical, whatever thing, but uh, we are looking at an adaptation for defense, right? To defend against, um, you know, predictor, basically, right? So um, we have option A, the croaking of a male toad. So when this occurs, this is actually a kind of performance to attract mates, right? Uh, for copulation, to put. Then we have option B, boxing in lizard. So we know that um, reptiles basically they box in the sun, you know, to regulate their body temperature. You know, we are talking about cold-blooded animals. So reptiles are good examples, and lizard, of course, is a reptile. 
all right so we have option c we have spines in porcupine fish so we know that um this porcupine fish actually um, carry out some kind of um changes you know just to it looks bigger you know with the spine when the body is inflicted and the spine still stands you know protruded and you know predators see um this structure right and they just avoid them they know that oh this is not an awesome this is not an awesome meal to actually um feed on right then as well there are poisons you know attached to um the external surface of the porcupine fish so this is of course a defense mechanism right so when we look at option d the huddling together of penguins so when we look at penguins you know when they come together um that um, adaptation is actually against um ash environmental condition so it's basically not um defense you know so it's just for uh, preservation to put you know uh, probably strong wind you know cold energy conservation and what have you so the most viable option here is option c for spines in porcupine fish question four the movement of uglina towards the source of light is a what all right, so when you talk about uh, movement of a motile organism, so in this context, you know, the organism can move its entire body, right? And such example is uglina. All right, so such kind of movement, you know, in response to a stimulus is referred to as tactic movement, or you can say tactism. So in this context, we are talking about light. So this is phototaxism. And of course, the uglina is moving towards the source of light. That is a positive photo taxism right so every other expression you have you know you can talk about some part of a particular plant you know responding to a non-directional stimulus and the other one directional stimulus so um, the correct option here is tactic movement or if you want to put um taxism photo taxism or positive photo taxism to be very specific so option b is the right option question five during mitosis, the stage at which chromosomes line up around the equator is what? So, we're looking at the equator and the spindle right here. So, that particular phase, you know, or stage in mitosis is correctly referred to as the metaphase. It occurs right here. We can have the early metaphase and the late metaphase. But the correct option, you know, for clarification is option B. So, option B is good to go. Question six. The waste product of insects is what? So if you want to talk about insects, you know, their basic um, excretory um, system or organ, I will refer to as the mapigian tubules, right? And what comes out of it basically, right? For the context of the option supply, we are looking at uric acid. And of course, this uric acid, it has a very distinct uh, properties, right? So, of course, if you check the my school website, you are going to see further explanation that we've provided regarding uric acid and um, other waste products, right, that are given off by insects. So, the correct option here is option A, uric acid. No sweat, of course, we can uh, attach that to mammals, you know, they sweat, they have sweat glands. So, option A is very correct. Question seven. Succession that occurs on an abandoned farmland is what? That is a primary succession, you know, you're basically starting from the scratch, all right? So that is primary succession. So we have other types of succession here. We have the secondary, we have the tertiary, we have the climax, all right? So the correct representation here, we have that in option C. So option C is the correct option. Do you like to have a jam simulated CBT experience? All you just need to do is to click on the link in the description below. This is going to get you to the My School website. Right there, you get to download the My School mobile app for your mobile devices, or you can go for the My School software for your laptops and other computers. So, why not try that right now? So, of course, we have um, question eight. You know, in Nigeria, we have the Southern Guinea savanna is found in where, right, in Nigeria. So, of course, um, we have um, um, types of Guinea savanna, but we are talking about the Southern Guinea savanna. And I think if I just want to bring it up generally, you know, the Guinea savanna, um, I think um, we can just go for, based on the provision we have here, of course, we have um, Kaduna, right, we have um, Quara, then we have Benue State, but um, several articles or several sources of information may give something very. So, I guess the closest I can go for here should be option B, you know, I'll go for um, Kogi and um, Quara, that's the closest that I, that can work, right, surely for the Southern um, Guinea Savannah. So, option B is good to go. Please do not forget that you have to hit the like button, also click on the subscribe button and always tap on bell notification for you to get alert. Immediately we upload the next video content just for you.
Number nine, which of the following is associated with the dark stage of photosynthesis? So when you talk about photosynthesis, you know, um, sunlight, chlorophyll, manufacture of food, blah, 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 and then giving off of oxygen. You know, so um, coming back to this, you know, photosynthesis, you can talk about the light stage, right? And you can talk about the dark stage. The light stage, as the name implies, occurs in the presence of sunlight, all right? And that is where we have a um, photolysis of water, okay? Just for, um, for the explanation. Then we now have the dark stage, of course, that is absence of light. And what occurs there? We have the assimilation of carbon dioxide. So option A is just basically a summary of what happens during the dark stage. And option C is just a summary of what happens during the light stage. So option A is the correct option. Question 10. The part of the mammalian skin that excretes metabolic waste is what? So at first, um, if you look at some functions of the mammalian skin, you know, we're looking at protection, you know, we're looking at um, storage of food, you know, we are looking at um, regulation of body temperature, and um, so much more, all right? Um, production of um, vitamin D, uh, milk, and what have you. So uh, we are now told that what part of the mammalian skin actually excretes metabolic waste? So once you take note of this, um, the skin layer can be split into two. You know, we have the epidermis and we have the dermis. So for the epidermis, you know, we have the honey or the cornified layer where you have the character, you know, that is the uh, atomos, you know, where there is protection. Dead cells are actually there. Then we have the granular layer, then we have the malpigian or the germinative layer. So if we can see from the word germinative, so we have um, actively dividing cells. So this and this belongs to the epidermis. Then for the dermis layer, we have the sweat gland, we have the effoluku, we have the sebaceous gland. So the function of the sebaceous gland is actually it secretes oily substance, you know, those um, oily substances, they have several functions, you know, um, protection against the microorganisms, uh, you know, um, preventing the skin from drying out, you know, and some other functions as well. Then we have the sweat gland, you know, it actually contains that dot that actually protrudes out, you know, where metabolic waste in form of sweat and other things are being excreted out of the body system. So the correct option is option A for the sweat gland. Question 11. The feeding relationship that exists between a tick and a cow is what? All right. So we'll, if you look at this closely, we know that um, tick are very um, kinds of um, pests. You know, they are real nuisance. Right. So the relationship you find between a tick and a cow, you realize that the tick is just um, sucking up blood, you know, to actually tap nutrients um, from the cow. And also this exposes the animal, you know, to threats. All right, so that kind of relationship where um, one organism is just ripping off the other without um, sending benefits, right? There's no shared benefit between them, just um, this is just benefiting and the host is being harmed. That relationship is referred to as parasitism. That's a parasitic relationship, right? Then we have a mechanism, then we have saprophytism, you know, saprophytes. You know, we are looking at um, organism living off dead or decaying matter. Right, so for instance, you can point to your fungi. Then we have um, commensalism. Of course, um, doing, um, in the course of modern explanation of the concept of commensalism, you know, um, I can't really pinpoint something now because it's complex than what we used to know. You know, we used to say um, commensalism, we used to say um, symbiotic behavior. You know, those things now have um, quite a deeper meaning than what we used to know. So basically, let me just stay with the context of the question. So the correct option is um, parasitism. 12. The type of fruit that is formed from a single flower, right, having several free carpels is what? Such kind of fruit, you know, we are looking at aggregates, all right. So a simple fruit is basically from a single ovary, all right. So the correct option is option B for aggregate fruits. Question 13. The part that performs urinal genital function in the male reproductive system is the what? So when you see urinal genital, so that means um, for excretion, right, and for reproduction. So it serves both functions. So that is your urethra, you know. It's actually linked up with the bladder where urine is stored, you know. Then it now comes out through the penis, right? So right there. So if it is um, urine that is coming out, it serves that function. That is for excretion function. Then if it is sperm release, right, during ejaculation, that, of course, you still find the urethra very operational. So the correct option is option C for the urethra. 
14, the components of blood in man are what? So basically, when we look at blood in man, what are the functions? You know, let's let's talk about some functions. You know, there are transport of nutrients, um, transport of hormones that are secreted. You know, and we have um, as well um, regarding body temperature. You know, and um, so much more. Okay, so what are the components of blood in man? Right, so we have the solid component and we have the liquid component. If you can use that, so the solid components, you know, we are looking at your um, red blood cell, your white blood cell, right? Then, if you are now talking about um, the um, liquid components, you are looking at the plasma. So, what option actually carries um, this um, compilation properly? So, we are looking at option D, you know, it has the solid components at the red blood cell, the white blood cell. And the platelets, right? So the liquid component has your plasma. So option D is the correct option. Question 15. The development of big muscles by a wrestler is an example of acquired traits or characteristics. It was actually acquired, right? In the course of use. Yes, basically this is talking about use. So you know, lifting heavy metals. Um, doing some aerobic um, exercises and the like. So this is, of course, acquired. It is not inherited. So if you are talking about inherited characteristics, probably you talk about height, you talk about color, you know, you talk about some other features like that. So um, mutation, you know, that is actually changing DNA, basically. Then atrophication, you know, we are looking at scenarios whereby there is probably loss or decrease in um, size of a body part. Or an organ to put. So basically, the correct option here yeah, is this is an acquired characteristic. So you and I can acquire big muscle masses or we can actually lose weight. Right? So option A is very correct. Question 16 Lack of nucleus is a feature in what? All right. So, you know, earlier we talked about um, the blood components. You know, we talked about the white blood cell, which uh, we have um, the red blood cell. And we have the platelet. Those are the solid components. Then the liquid part, that is your plasma. All right. So the red blood cell is also referred, all right, to as the erythrocyte. So it has no nucleus. So that is one distinct um, feature that we can identify regarding um, the red blood cell. So either you have red blood cell presented, right, or you have your erythrocyte. It's actually the same thing. So the correct option is option C for erythrocyte. 17. A universal recipient of blood belongs to the blood group what? Alright, so we have the herbal blood groups, you know, we have the group A, we have the group B, we have the group AB and the group O. Alright, so the universal donor is actually the group O. Alright, so they can donate to every other group, right? And then we have the universal recipient, they can receive from every other group. And that, of course, is the group AB. Right, so uh, once another group donates to AB, there is no issue. Right, there's nothing like uh, agglutination, you know, clotting of blood, you know, due to uh, mismatching, okay, of blood supply and reception. All right, basically, that's just it. So, um, the correct option is option B, AB, universal recipients, then universal donor, that's group O. So, the question requires universal recipients. So, option B is your go to option. Perhaps you have questions you like to ask. All you just need to do is to use the link in the description below. This is going to get you to the My School website. So right there you get to ask your questions and our solution providers are waiting and willing to help you out. So all you just need to do is to ask those questions right now. So join me as I solve the next question. So I have the internal structure of a leaf that has larger airspace is what? Okay, so that is, of course, you can find that with your option C, the spongy mesophyll. This has distinct function, you know, that allows it to carry out the function described right here. So, option C is the right option. In case you have solutions or explanations you want to share, please, we are so much attentive and interested. All you just need to do is to use the comment section below, kindly indicate the question number and the solution or explanation you'd like to share. 19. An example of arboreal animal is what? So when you see arboreal animal, I'm talking about animal that actually um, live or are comfortable, you know, staying on trees, right? So such example of animals, uh, we have um, your birds, right? You have your monkeys, you know, then you have your squirrels as presented in this option. So option A is correct. Then when you look at your dog, 
right? Basically, your dog prefers, you know, terrestrial. Then you see sometimes it goes to the water, you know, for some obvious reasons. Then we have your pig. You can see um, this, of course, has been domesticated. Then you have your rats. So, you know, that lives um, around you, you and her, us, wherever, okay, depending on our location. So, basically, the correct option here is option A for the squirrels, right? So, option A is the right option. Question number 20. The movement of sugars from the leaf to other parts of plants is what? So, uh, you know, for, su from, for sugars to actually move from the leaf, you know, that tells you that photosynthesis has occurred, you know, um, most probably. And um, being produced, there, it has to move to other parts of the um, plant, right? So that kind of movement, you know, of course, it is transportation, but biologically, that is not correct. So the correct biological term is translocation. It has been translocated from the site of production, you know, to where it will be needed. That is other um, parts of the plant. So the correct option, you know, the correct term, of course, is option D for translocation. Question 21. Gaseous exchange in annelids is more advanced and efficient compared to flatworms because all right, so when we talk about pl uh, flatworms, we are looking at the phylum, you know, plathiemites. So we are looking at um, your uh, tapeworm, you are looking at your planaria, your flukes, right? So uh, basically, you know, right here, you are just looking at their body shape, you know, some of them sack like and what have you. But when you come to analysts, you know, we are looking at more advanced organisms. So examples of analysts, we are looking at um, your earthworm, then your leeches. Those are common examples, of course. And the edge they have when it comes to gaseous exchange is that their cylindrical body shape, you know, it gives them a high surface area, you know, to volume ratio. So we are talking about the rate at which um, oxygen diffuses, you know, it's enough to actually sustain um, the organism. Right, and of course, they are, the cells of the epidermis have blood capillaries, so that negates the expression we have in A. Right, so we talk about high surface area to volume ratio, so that negates this. So, the correct option here is that their cylindrical shape gives high surface area to volume ratio for efficient oxygen diffusion and um, body function. All right, so we've come to the end of this particular compilation. So, of course, we have so much videos to come. All you just need to do is to stay with us and do not forget to hit the like button, click on the subscribe button and always tap on that bell notification for you to get alerts immediately we upload the next video content.